Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do our fifth winter 2022-23 look ahead. We've been doing these over the course of the last month or so with the recurring theme of potentially a colder start to the winter uh, before turning milder towards the second half of the winter. Of course we're going to have more reliable data for the first half of the winter because it is of course, in the shorter range, at least relatively, compared to weather down in sort of February, March time. Uh, and we are now into November. This is the first update that we've done where we are into November. So within the next couple of weeks, the cold potential becomes real. We do have the possibility of seeing wintriness uh, towards the second half of November, especially in the north, but not exclusively, especially as we head into the start of December. So we'll have a look again at what's happening in the stratosphere, the zonal mean winds. We'll have an update on on the ECM WF um, uh, weekly charts for the pressure levels, and we also have a look at the CFS as well as a bit of fun. See what well, that is showing over the next few weeks. Now, just a teaser: it is looking still likely we're going to be seeing some cold weather towards the start of the winter. Now, if we have been uh, watching the daily videos, we have been looking at the possibility of a big higher pressure system building towards the middle of the month, and a lot of the models are hinting that it does shift to our north, perhaps even our west as well, towards the last week or two of the month, uh, and that would cause northerly or easterly winds. That is right the extended range of any of the uh, ensemble members or, vi uh, or operational runs we see in, in our daily videos. So we haven't had that much signal, but we're still seeing it on these longer range charts as well. Now, uh, of course, it may not come off, but the fact that we're seeing consistency still means that I do th firmly think we will see colder weather. Whether it's snowy, whether it's very wintry, whether it's be anything like that, uh, I don't know. Will it be high pressure dominated? Will it most likely probably be frosty? Will there be an above average chance of colder weather within that? Yes, uh, that's what I think is going to be happening. So we've got to keep an eye on it. Of course, uh, probably in the We'll probably do our final winter look ahead maybe next week or the week after because uh, then we'll be firmly into sort of a, a potential winter period, wintry period towards the second half of November. Um, and then, we'll, of course, it'll be more re reincorporated into our daily videos. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, we'll be having a look at what the Met Office do, of course, publish because their uh, sort of uh, outlook... Uh, uh, the little par paragraph in the outlooks that will be coming into uh, sort of end of November, early December time frame uh, very soon. So we'll be having a look at that probably in the next couple of weeks as well. But that signal, as I said, for a colder start or at least more blocked start of the winter is continuing. Now, if you start on the stratosphere, these zonal mean winds, uh, 10 HPA um, uh, over the North Pole. Again, uh, I've explained this quite a lot over the last few weeks, but it is basically the wind uh, high up in the atmosphere that does power uh, winds throughout the atmosphere. Uh, this is the stratosphere, so the layer of the atmosphere above the troposphere, and the troposphere is where our weather takes place. So you'd think all oh, the stratosphere, whatever happened there, doesn't really affect us, but it affects uh, the winds, uh, the wind directions. So it doesn't affect any air masses, it doesn't affect anything like that, it doesn't affect how much cold air there is around. What it does do is it changes uh, the strength uh, of the wind direction, the zonal winds, so the general wind direction. So if the stratosphere, the winds up in the atmosphere, are weaker or below average, uh, or even reversed, which means they're going easterlies instead of uh, the westerlies which is expected this time of year that does mean further down in the atmosphere there's less westerly momentum so it means any other climate drivers at play uh, can cause amplification in the jet stream blocking patterns they would not get flattened by the stronger zonal mean winds so it doesn't guarantee us cold weather but it means in a time we have weak stratospheric winds we've got an above average chance of seeing disruption to the jet stream blocking patterns northerly easterly winds come much more likely so that is one indicator we always have a look at is how strong the zonal mean winds. Now, at the moment, they're actually quite strong. Uh, you can see here, if we look at the green chart, these are the GFS ensembles over the course of the next couple of weeks. And you can see at the moment, they are well above average, around one or two standard deviations within the mean. Um, and you can see the mean there is the black line. That's what we tend to see this time of year. So it's still strengthening, probably peaking around late December into early January. But you see the GFS ensemble members keep us relatively above average for the next two weeks. But we get to the second half of November, you see there is a drop in the uh, in quite a few of the ensemble members, or at least the average of those ensemble members probably trending more towards average. So the stratosphere 
perhaps trending more towards average for this time of year. Maybe even some going well below average, but we still have many uh, above average. Now, of course, the stratosphere, as I said, doesn't directly cause cold weather in the UK. It just means it's uh, more likely when we get more amplification at play. And, we, and those blocking patterns that we are st that would cause cold weather, they are appearing in the next week or two in the form of higher pressure over the top of us that could migrate northwards. So as long as the stratospheric winds are not too strong, it could mean that that higher pressure can go further northwards, whereas if the stratospheric winds were too strong, we, it could get flattened by more westerly momentum. So it is, it is why, yes, we're not going to see a sudden stratospheric warming, uh, perhaps not at all this winter, if not for at least a month or two, but it could mean, if we did see average to below average stratospheric winds, like some of these GFS ensemble members are suggesting, it could mean we do, uh, it does allow us to have... Um, a bit colder potential there. You can see the CFS, which is a much longer range course, quite experimental. You can see it goes weak towards the end of November, early December, uh, below average. Again, nothing ridiculously weak, but weaker than average. And as I said, that could allow the westerly momentum to be uh, influenced a little bit more, blocking patterns, more northerlies and easterlies, uh, or a general high pressure course in colder, frostier conditions. Now, you've got two lines here for the CFS. Normally, you get an ensemble charts, but they haven't been appearing recently, unfortunately. But we've got CFS, the main operational run. Uh, it's blue line and the bias corrected. It's so the blue line, uh, or the turquoise line, that's without its bias, uh, with, with, with its bias still, because it is found to be more biased towards weaker stratospheric winds. So so the purple line, the pinky purple line, that's showing more above average towards the second half of the winter. So that's actually following what we've been thinking over the course of the last few weeks. The second half of the winter, especially with the Enso region suggesting the, lean, the La Nina, suggesting uh, colder starts to the winter or more blocked starts to the winter, and then more of a westerly influence towards the second half of the winter, we're seeing that within some of the stratospheric uh, things as well. So we could see a bit of a perfect storm here of potentially cold weather towards the start, and then things all aligning for that, and then all aligning for a westerly second half of the winter. But of course, typically, whenever we try and forecast winters more than a week or two ahead, uh, they can be very much opposite to what we what we think with some of the climate drivers so it, it would be typical this year uh, that if we think there's going to be a colder start of the winter it goes really westerly uh, towards the start of the winter and then goes cold in the second half so but we'll have to see exactly what happens indicators though are at the moment colder starts with these stratospheric potentially uh, stratospheric winds being potentially weaker than average that could encourage that for stronger than average into uh, end of december january and february now if we go Go over to have a look uh, on weather is cool again. These are the the uh, zonal mean winds, but these are cut through the atmosphere, still over the North Pole, but they're through different pressure levels. So you can see on the left hand side, we've got one HPA right at the top of the atmosphere, and then we'll go all the way down to a thousand, which is towards the surface. Now the reds here are showing westerly winds, uh, and you can see the blue, green, that sort of neutral. So westerly winds or anything sort of green, yellow, orange into pink, then sort of blues and purples, that's more of an easterly flow. And you can see up in the stratosphere, we've got very strong stratospheric winds uh, up towards 55 to 70 metres per second, and that's average to above average this time of year, and that's expected high up in the atmosphere. Towards the surface, you can see it's much, much more ropey and oscillating between easterly and westerly momentums. That's a difference between uh, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic and higher pressure blocking it. And you can see definitely towards the middle of the month, there's more blue showing here. That's the higher pressure that we are, that we've been seeing on the short range models building in. Now, this is useful to have a look at what the actual conditions are, but it's even more useful to look on the right, which is the anomalies. So reds here, meaning it is stronger than average, so more westerly than average, or, uh, and the blues are weaker than average, so weaker than average westerly. So if we'd expect for this time of year the atmosphere to be 25 metres per second in a westerly direction, then, and if it was only 15, we'd see anomaly of minus 10. So the blues here does not mean it's an easterly wind, but it means weaker than average westerlies, because generally the zone of winds for our country, uh, or the United Kingdom, the British Isles in general, is from a westerly direction. So you'd expect most of the time uh, on the left uh, chart here, it to be in the greens, yellows, and oranges. And that's what we see high up in the atmosphere, and for quite a lot of the time at the surface, but you can see those blue interludes where we see northerly or easterlies or stagnant uh, flows. But you can see definitely on the anomaly chart, there's very strong westerly momentum at the moment, especially high up in the atmosphere, and even towards the surface, we see a lot more blues kicking in. From around the 17th to 20th of November onwards, this chart ends around the 21st. So a lot of blues originating in the lower end of the atmosphere, that is high pressure blocking, and that's that big high pressure system building and trying to push northwards. Uh, and again, this is over the Arctic, so higher pressure 
definitely blocking potentially there and stretching through the atmosphere in the longer term. So could this be some big high pressure blocking throughout the atmosphere, which could mean recurring blocking patterns become more likely? Because of course we can see high pressure systems build right at the surface, but if they don't have a lot of uh, help throughout the atmosphere, they can get very much moved, flattened, and not last too long. But if we see a big, big high pressure uh, blob within the atmosphere over the North Pole, yes, it's not going to mean it's blocked and cold the whole time, but it will mean that we could see recurring themes, especially towards the early part of the winter. That's the first time we've seen that on these charts, these deeper blues building in, in terms of weaker than average zonal winds, because of course these only stretch out a couple of weeks like our, uh, like the models from our daily video, so we generally don't see, um, we haven't generally seen this, but it's because it's getting into the time frame now where we're expecting to be seeing more easterly momentum. Again, it's still in the extended range, 10 days beyond, and my sort of rule of thumb is anything beyond day 10 can flip very quickly, anything beyond day 7, less likely but still can, and anything within 5 days, we are much, much more sure of it. So we need to see this verify, the only way we'll see it verify is if we get around to the 14th or the 15th, and this signal remains, um, but it is still there, definitely suggesting blocks, maybe cold weather towards the start of the winter. Now, if you have a look at the ECMWF weekly anomalies, we've been looking at these for the past uh, few winter look heads, of course, again, showing where high pressure, low pressure is, but from the UK perspective, the charts we've been looking at are in the North Pole, so don't, don't directly impact the UK, but of course, if there's blocking over the Arctic, it most likely will extend towards the UK, uh, at least pushing colder air or shifting the jet stream further southwards. So you can see at the moment, a high pressure over to our east, low pressure to our west, this southwesterly unsettled flow we do have at the moment. Next week, as expected, from the 14th to the 21st, big high pressure system builds in. Over the top of us, initially bringing up a bit of a southerly flow or southeasterly flow, so generally quite mild. We go to the week after that, high pressure shifts slightly further westwards, more of a northerly or northwesterly flow, slightly cooler but nothing crazy cold, so definitely around the 21st, 28th, still high pressure building in, but nothing crazy cold, um, and you wait until early December more of an easterly flow blocking towards Scandinavia over the UK. Again, this would very much trend more of a northerly or easterly flow. Again, it's difficult to say exactly until we get in the shorter time frame, but this is definitely a blocking, quite chilly, cold pattern. Whether it be snowy would be dependent on if we saw any extremely cold air masses or low pressure bumping into this. But with this sort of pattern, you expect it to at least be cold and frosty. And if we go into the first, uh, from the 5th to the 12th of December, that blocking, look, it's gone towards Greenland and Iceland. This would be a very cold pattern, northerly or northeasterly flows. You'd expect this gap here between the higher pressure towards Scandinavia and Eastern Europe to have a blob of a tropospheric polar vortex where a lot of the cold air is contained. You'd expect these areas to go very cold, most likely for that cold air to get dragged towards the UK at least a few times. So, yeah, this would be going very cold. And all the way to the end, extreme blocking, the blocking right over the Arctic, lower pressure sat over France, and this is a, top, a typical easterly pattern. Again, we'd have to see the exact specifics to say how cold it would be. But the lead up to Christmas, this is showing easterly winds, low pressure to the south, bumping into that cold air. You could see significant snow for at least colder than average conditions. could rain, but be colder than average. So you can see definitely a uh, suggestion for quite strong easterly winds, perhaps, into the middle of December. But we always say this is extended range stuff. So we'll have to see exactly how this does develop over the next couple of weeks uh it does as i said keep getting pushed back so uh it could get pushed back further but we are seeing consistent signals now in the shorter range for this blocking into the middle of this uh, november so i'd assume that if we did start to see this push northwards it probably would be in the last 10 days of november that is the consistent signal anyone saying we're going to be seeing flat westerlies towards the end of november into the start of december it could happen but that is not what we are seeing from the models. Uh, and of course, the models are known to be wrong, but uh, we've got to put some sort of weight into them as they're the best indicator we have at the moment. So we do finish the video by going over to the CFS and see what that is showing over the next couple of weeks. Uh, again, we're only probably going to run out until end of December, January time. But you can see that it is, uh, again, showing westerly flow at the moment. Uh, and we'll be interested to see how much higher pressure we do have. So you see the high pressure builds in towards the middle of November, sort of moves away, but never fully moves away. Stays near over the top of us, putting in brief easterlies, but nothing crazy cold. A lot of that cold air is going towards Eastern Europe. Eventually, though, we do see a little bit of a bridge 
edge towards the north, towards the 10th of December. Um, but then still seeing sort of southerly or easterly flows there. For Christmas, firmly under higher pressure would be inversion, be quite cold, but it's as we head right towards the end, look at that, real cold, northerly or easterly wind developing there, flattening, they're getting more cold weather. So this pattern would have a lot of high pressure blocking, following on from the ECMWF, weekly anomalies are showing, but the real cold weather doesn't apply, arrive to the end of December, early January, the proper blocking doesn't get going. And then beyond that, as we head into, uh, into February, Look at that, much more westerly influence. Yes, we do see brief colder patches there. That's not too unusual for seeing brief colder spells there. And there's still some blocking around into March, but we were seeing much more westerly influence there. A lot more of those westerly winds for a time through the second half of January and, Fe and February. So, yeah, very interesting seeing that today. CFS uh, is definitely showing still blocking around, uh, especially over the top of us, for the, for the next month or so before potentially migrating northwards towards the second half of the December of December into January uh, but of course the CFS uh, does flip-flop all the time so we'll have to see what happens but the signal is there in the CFS for blocking we'll just have to see where it goes uh, and how sustained it is so yeah uh, looking continuing uh, continually likely that our initial thoughts of a colder start to the winter or at least more blocked start to the winter is potentially coming to fruition here uh, of course, we're not going to know how cold it is until it gets into sort of the seven day time frame but for the time being it's looking pretty chilly um, towards the second half of the month with higher pressure over the top of us, potentially easterly flows, northerly flows. Again, they might not be beast from the east or anything like that. They might just be chilly flows with uh, coldish air, low dew points, a lot of frost and fog around, um, or they could be very cold. That is something we'll have to keep an eye on for the shorter range. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.